welcome, welcome. We want to thank God for everybody that's joining us live tonight on Facebook Live and all of you all that are here. Like I said, I believe you're in the right place at the right time, so we're just going to focus in and listen to what the Spirit of God will have us to say. Now, Thursday nights is Faith Club Bible Study. It's Bible study, so we're going to look at a lot of verses tonight. But what, again, encourage you to hear is what the Spirit of God will say to you through his word, and we believe your life will be blessed. Amen? Amen. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this another opportunity to meditate your word. We pray, as Paul said, that my speech and preaching will not be with the enticing words of man's wisdom, but let it be by demonstration of your spirit and of power that their faith, our faith, will rest not in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. By that, we're asking to experience you through this message tonight, supernaturally. Speak by the Holy Spirit. Move in and out in every aisle and touch the life of every person present. Let not one of us leave the same way that we came. We pray for those that are joining us online tonight, whether it be live or later on when they'll listen to this message. We pray that they won't be distracted from without or from within, but they too will hear clearly what you are saying to them, and their lives will be blessed as well. Father, above all, we give you the praise and the honor and the glory for that which will be done in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, open with me in your Bible tonight to the book of Hebrews chapter 11. We're continuing a series of teachings that we began about six weeks ago on the subject of faith experience. A faith experience is when you encounter God in a supernatural way and it leaves you not confused, not afraid, but it leaves you firmly persuaded. It's when we experience God in a supernatural way and it leaves us in faith. Well, the title of tonight's message is we've been marching through the book of Hebrews chapter 11, which is, is known as the Faith Hall of Fame. We've been looking at examples of indivi individuals who lived their life by faith, and as a result, there was a record made of it, praise God. So we're going to talk tonight about Sarah who conceived by faith. Amen? Amen. Well, the Bible says in the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, and verse number 11, that it was by faith Abraham's wife, Sarah herself, also received strength to conceive seed. And she bore a child when she was past the age, because she judged him faithful who had promised. The first thing I want to note tonight is that she received, by faith, strength to conceive seed. Sarah, by faith, received strength in her body, physically, to be able to carry a child. I think that's interesting to note that it didn't just say that Sarah conceived by faith. But it puts the, 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 the horse before the cart, not the cart before the horse. In order for you to physically be able to carry a baby the full term, your body has to be ready for that. Right. Your body has to be strong enough to endure the growth and the development, the energy drain. I mean, you're, 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 you know, there's a, a child growing on the inside. And she was past the age. And so the Bible specifically notes that Sarah by faith, received strength in her body physically to be able to do that. Why do I point that out? Because you may be in a situation in your body where things aren't working the way that they should. Yeah. Or maybe you're not as strong as you used to be. Yeah. Or maybe something negatively is, is going on yeah. in your body and, 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 and you want to experience the manifestation of the healing that, that God has made available to you. Amen. Well, I can tell you that your faith can make the difference in your own physical body. Yeah. She receives strength. or She receives something physically in her body by faith. When I took a note of that, something stirred in me. And it was a reminder of what the word says in Romans, the 8th uh, chapter. 
So I went there and I looked at it. And in Romans chapter 8, it's talking about uh, the, the Spirit of God in our life and Jesus in our life. And verse 10 specifically, it says that if Christ is in you, then the body is dead because of sin. But the Spirit is life because of righteousness. Notice he says, if Christ lives on the inside of you, if you've made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, then he is living on the inside of you. But he points out that if that's the case, well, your body, because of sin, is dead. It's perishing. The outward man, the Bible says, is perishing. It's growing older. Things won't work in the natural like they used to. You won't be as fast or as quick or as sharp as you used to be the older that you get. But then he points out something in contrast to that reality of your body getting old and perishing. He says, but the spirit who is also inside you is life because of righteousness. So don't, in other words, settle for death or things slowing down in your physical body. Why? Because you've got the spirit of life on the inside of you. Man, this really grows alive when he goes right into the next verse. He says in verse 11, he says, Now the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life, give strength, uh -huh. manifest healing yeah. to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. That's a good word right there. Yeah. And really what took place in Sarah's body when she by faith received strength, she received that strength from God and we know and we've learned that the Holy Spirit is God's agent of operation in the earth. Anytime you see somebody receive something from God, you know that the Holy Spirit was involved. And when the Holy Spirit is involved, he'll manifest himself in nine different ways according to the text of this entire series, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Well, we know that she received a manifestation of the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God, just like he moved over the waters in the beginning, he moved on that woman's body and gave her strength and strength supernatural ability. There were things that her, that were dead in her. Her ovaries. Maybe her womb was dead or maybe her fallopian tubes weren't working right. All of her life she wasn't able to have a child. Even in, even in the healthiest of days of her life she was barren. Maybe she didn't have a cycle. Maybe she didn't have a period. Maybe she wasn't able to have an ovulation or whatever the case. Maybe there was a deficiency in her eggs or, or, or whatever the case. But the Bible says that the Holy Spirit moved on her yeah. by receiving strength. Yeah. Oh, yes. man. Amen. I'm getting excited. Yeah. Why am I saying that? Because maybe something's not working in your yeah. body the way that it should. Oh. Don't just listen to a story about Sarah conceiving seed and, and receiving strength. No. Here, find yourself in the scripture. If God did this for her, you know it's already done for you. So if the, now the body is dead or dying because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness, and if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead, his entire body wasn't working. Come on, blood, the, the contents of his blood ran out on the ground. He didn't have life in his body. His body was dead and in a tomb for three days. But something happened on the day that he was raised from the dead. The Holy Spirit moved in him and he was raised from the dead. It wasn't just an ovary or a womb. It was his entire body. Yeah. But if the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead Amen. dwells in you, then he who raised Christ from the dead will also quicken your body that's dying. Yeah. As you grow old, don't talk old. Yeah. <laughs> don't act old. Right. Yeah. I meet people all the time, and they're at different ages, and it, it shocks me 
how old they are. Right. Yeah. Because if I look at them on the outside, I've put them at least 10 years beyond right. where they actually are because of how they look. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, you speak to your body. The Spirit of God. You can be 90 and going strong. Yeah. Amen. I met a woman after service on Sunday. She's 94, walking on her own power in her right mind. Yeah. Enjoying the message. Come on. Yeah. Glad to be a part of the, you know, coming to be a part yeah. of the church. Amen. I'm expecting to be one of those preachers that yeah. preaches 90 and 94 yeah. years old yeah. and be preaching strong. Yeah. Praise God. The other thing I, I, I need to know is that he who raised Christ from the dead. I almost wanted to call this message tonight resurrection of the dead. You might have not just in your physical body, but dead things in your life. Maybe some of your dreams have died. Maybe some of your hopes have died. Maybe you have a relationship or two in your life that is dead. And you lost contact with that brother because of a bad situation or that sister or, you know, you're estranged from that child because of this difficulty or another. Whatever is dead in your life can be raised Amen. from the dead. Amen. You may be in a situation where you feel like your marriage is dead or maybe you're separated from your spouse. Well, I'm here today to tell you that you can, by faith, see the dead raised. Amen. In your life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is interesting because as I meditated on this, then now a flurry of scriptures came to me. In Matthew chapter 10, this is very unique because, you know, Jesus actually told his disciples to heal the sick and cleanse the lepers and raise the dead. In Matthew chapter 10 and verse number 8, he tells them to go and he tells them to heal the sick and cleanse the lepers. He tells them to raise the dead. Dead things in your life that, that look impossible are not impossible with God. Amen. 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 Cast out demons freely as you receive freely to give. I mean, and the Bible talks about uh, the resurrection of Jesus in several occasions. Not only did he talk about it, but in the book of Matthew chapter 11, verse 5, again, he's telling John to go tell John that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised to life, and the poor have the gospel. I mean, it was a manifested fact that people were being raised from the dead during Jesus' ministry. You know, we might think, well, that's remarkable and that's good for him. But the Bible actually teaches us that we should be doing the works of Jesus. In John chapter 14 and verse number 12, most assuredly, Jesus says to us, he who believes, now that word means to have faith. Anybody here have faith? Amen. All right. Well, what we're about to read applies to us. He who believes in me, Jesus said, the works that I do, what are those works? Healing the sick. Cleansing the lepers, raising dead things, Amen. dead people. Praise God. He said, the works that I do, he, the one that believes in me, will do also. And greater works than these, he will do. Because I go to my father. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we're talking about raising the dead. One of the unique things about Christ being raised from the dead was that again and again, he would talk about the fact that that one day is coming where they're going to put me on a cross and I'm going to be killed and I'll be raised the third day. Amen. One last scripture along this line is Romans chapter 4. And this specifically ties us back to the text, which is that Sarah received strength to conceive seed. The Bible says in Romans chapter 4 and verse number 19 about Abraham and Sarah that not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead. Again, have you been looking at things in your life that are already dead? If you look at that situation in your life that's already dead, you know, I, I especially feel led. It's, if you know somebody that's believing God to have a child and they're married, amen, because you first have to be married. You can just want a kid, you can just want a kid. Oh, I'm leaving God for a child. Oh, I want to have a family. But if you're not married, amen. Yeah. Right. It's not time yet. Amen. Yeah. Amen. amen. And don't let that pressure you. Oh, my clock is ticking. 
What does your clock have to do with anything? When you serve the almighty miracle work. Amen. 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 Don't let that pressure you. Praise God. It amazes me how many scriptures that talk about a woman who was barren, not able to have children, you know, has had mis miscarriages, and supernaturally is now able to have children. Right. And this is an example. His body was dead. He, he didn't produce, you know, fertile sperm in him. And he was about 100 years old when this happened. Not only did he not consider his own body, he didn't consider the deadness, deadness of Sarah's womb. The deadness is not just because she's 90 years old, but the fact that even when she was 13 or 30 years old, she wasn't able. There was deadness involved. So what we're going to see tonight is there, there's this raising of the dead as we see it. So let's continue. In Hebrews chapter 11, once again, we looked at the first part of that, that by faith, Sarah herself also received strength, but now notice she received strength specifically to conceive seed. She didn't just receive strength to be strong. She received strength to conceive seed. And you can actually leave the door open. Praise God. Amen. She received strength to conceive seed as she bore a child when she was past the age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Amen. So by faith, Sarah conceived seed. We dealt with the first part, but let's deal with this part. If you're in a situation where things have died and, and you need conception to take place spiritually or figuratively in your life, then pay attention, especially if you believe in God to have a baby. Why? Because you can have that baby by faith. We've learned that we should do everything that we do. How? By faith. By being firmly persuaded that we've heard from God and experienced God in a supernatural way and we've accepted it as true. You know, so we can say that she did this by faith. How did she conceive a child after the age? She did it how? By, by faith. The Bible literally says by faith. But let's put what we've learned in this entire series, in these series, into the equation. Why is faith important to Sarah? Well, without faith, she's not going to have this faith, right? So this alone, so if you're in a situation where you're believing to have a child and you're, whatever difficulty it was between your husband and yourself, then understand this, the way you should have that child is not by trying, not by tracking ovulation, not by, you know, all of the, not, not certain things are good. We don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, but put God first. Amen. The way you're going to have that child is by faith, not Amen. by having a cycle. Come on. Amen. You'll have it supernatural. Go read the count. Well, number one, faith is important not only because she wouldn't have a child without it, but she wouldn't be able to please God without it. Amen. Amen. She, she wouldn't be able to operate the way that her father operates without it. Another thing we, sh we need to plug in is who firmly persuaded her to believe to have a child? You ever think about that? Who convinced her to be leave? that she could have. Who firmly persuaded? Because again, faith is a firm persuasion. It's conviction based upon hearing. You know, who persuaded her? Did her husband persuade her? Or did God himself persuade her? We're going to look at that tonight because again, we want to find these evidences in the lives of the individuals that we're studying. Amen. Also a good question, if we could find it. When was she firmly persuaded? Did it happen when they got married? She was just convinced. And for 60 years or how many ever years that it took, she was just firmly persuaded that someday I'm going to have this baby. It would, it would do us well to find out when was she firmly persuaded. Right. To mark that moment. Amen. Amen. Come on, to set up a, a stack of stones and to, to, to remind ourselves, God visited me. Somebody spoke to me and it was like God speaking to me. Right. Amen. Amen. So when was she firmly persuaded? The next thing is how did she get the faith that she got? So why is faith important? What is faith? It's a firm persuasion. But then how did you get it? Well, how did Sarah specifically get the faith that she got? 
She obviously got it because it was by faith that she had the child. But, but how did she get the faith? We know that faith comes by hearing an anointed message and accepting it as true. At some point in the scriptures, can we read that she heard a message from God and she took it personally? Or did she have an experience with God and she accepted it as true? Because you can reject it. Amen? And then the fourth thing we want to examine is once she got it, how did she work it? Is there any evidence that... That she worked her faith. We know now that faith works by saying. Faith works by doing. Faith works by patience. And we're about to learn that faith works by love. Amen? And then, so let's go back once again and look at these things in the light of the scripture. So the Bible says that by faith, Sarah herself also received strength. We dealt with that. To conceive seed. We've dealt with that. And she bore a child when she was past the age. Why? Because she judged him faithful who had promised. There's several things here before we dig into her story. Notice all of this was because at some point in her life, she made a decision. And it was a hard decision. Now, where do you get that word? It doesn't say that she decided. But the Bible says that she judged. And every time you see that word judge, think about a courtroom. What does a judge sit in a courtroom to do? He hears both sides. Yeah. Or she hears both sides. And then makes a decision. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Her whole job right. uh -huh. is to govern, to make a decision of what the outcome is going to be right. based on what they heard. She heard some things and made a decision in her heart. I appreciate you tonight. A hard decision. Okay, plug it back in. All of this happened. She ended up having this child beyond the age because she decided in her heart that him was faithful. Amen. <laughs> Come on. Who is the him? That God is faithful. Amen. She decided. God's faithful. God, we can meditate on that, but let's go one step further. She just decided not only that he was faithful, but him who promised. Yes, right. Now, the key with the promise is this. A promise, and I wrote this down in a unique way. Unique way. A promise is not proof. Remember, mm -hmm. faith is not proof. She didn't have proof that she was going to be able to have this child. Right. She had to believe that even though, even when I was young, I couldn't. Now that I'm old, that I can, it's not because you give me proof. How do I know or, you know, will take off or that I will be able to do the things that you put on my heart to do? She didn't have proof. All she had was a persuasion. Amen. A promise is not a proof. Therefore, we must be persuaded. In other words, God persuades us by promising us. Amen. He promises us, and if he promises us, then we can be persuaded by his promise if we believe yeah. and accept this truth that he's faithful to come through with his word. Amen? I don't have proof, but I got a promise. Oh, that I preach. Come on. I don't have proof. Right, right. Say it out loud. I don't have proof, but I have promise. And that's enough. Come on, say that. That's, and that's enough for me to be persuaded. He tell a young child, I promise you that this Christmas you'll get a bike. Right. That's all they need. They don't need proof. <laughs> they don't need to see your good check book. Come on. They don't need to see your bank account. Right. All they know is they got a promise. Amen. Hey, go up and to God. I know somebody's getting this. Right. Amen. So I got to calm down. All right. <laughs> Man. All right. So let's dig into this story and see evidences of this. Now, I need to go quick through this part, so bear with me. In Genesis chapter 16, this is the beginning of Sarah's story. We looked at Genesis 11 to see Abram's story, but let's look at Sarah's story. Now, Sarai, Abram's wife, had borne him no children. The emphasis is here is from the time that they were married up until this point. So from young until they're old. We've already looked at what age they got married and you know, how old they were when they left and how old they are now. But the scripture is saying in chapter 16, that Abram's wife didn't give her any children. Okay. And she had an Egyptian maid servant whose name was Hagar, verse 2. Of course, so Sarai said to Abram, See now, 
The Lord has restrained me from bearing children. Please go into my maid. Perhaps I'll obtain children by her. And Abraham heeded the voice of Sarah. Does this sound like a woman of faith? Not at all. She doubts that she'll ever be able to have a child. And she did that because she was wrong about God. I made another note. She believed bad about God, and because she believed that she was in the, in the situation that she was in, at his doing. When you believe wrong, you'll do wrong. Yeah. She believed bad about God. She believed that she was in the situation that, we, that she was in at God's doing. Look at what she said. She said, see now, Abram? You know, I'm convinced that the Lord is the one who has kept me from having children. Is that true? Now, some would hesitate and think, well, you know, maybe God is teaching her a lesson. Maybe she's having difficulty conception because of the sin that was in her life. Or maybe her parents sinned or she was conceived in sin. She did bad things, and as a result, God is teaching her a lesson. God is the one that put this sickness on her to keep her from being fertile or having a child. Listen, child of God, if you believe wrong, you'll do wrong. She ended up giving her handmaiden to her husband so that they could have sex enough to have a child. And he went along with it. Which is another problem. <laughs> <in us. laughs> Say out loud. Say out loud. To believe wrong, believe and, wrong. and you'll do wrong. Amen. Do wrong. Now, and, and I don't have time to stay there, and I would love to minister to you about that to identify you in this story. Are you believing, etc.? But let's move on. At the end of this chapter, the Bible says that Abram was 86 years old. Now, what we do know is that there was a 10 year age difference between the husband and wife, Abram and Sarah. So if at the end of this chapter, he's 86, one thing is supernatural that he had a baby at 86, because Hagar got pregnant. But then the second thing is, she's 76 years old. Amen? All right. Well, 16 goes right into 17. The end of 16 is verse 16. Chapter 17, verse 1, the very next verse says, and when Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am almighty God, walk before me and be blameless. Again, what we're looking at is when, did she, when was she persuaded that she was going to have this child? How did she get the faith to get this child? How did she work her faith? Up to this point, there's no faith. She doesn't believe that she can or ever will. Have you ever been there? Maybe you've struggled believing for the good things and the big things that God has for your life. Amen. Well, there's hope for you because there was still hope for her. Even though she was believing wrong, she ended up believing right. But check this out. We went from the last verse of chapter 16 to the first verse of chapter 17. The last verse of 16 said that Abram was 86 years old, and the first verse says that he was 99. God didn't say anything to Abram or his wife for 13 years because of the decision that they made to do something different than what he said. I'm preaching real good tonight. I'm only taking my time because I have to hurry up. <laughs> 13 years went by. I meditated on this, and you know, God could immediately just started talking to him about his next son, which would be Isaac. But what would that have done to his 13-year-old child? So God gave them time to parent this child, or it could be just, just because that they displeased him, that they put themselves in a position where they couldn't hear from him anymore. Right. Could be. Right? But let's just note the fact that it was 13. Years. Now, if you go back, it, it hadn't been that long. He was talking to him again and again from 75 up to 86, talked to him frequently, showing him visions and dreams of what his children would be. 
But now it's 13 years and you didn't hear anything. I know that's for somebody, but in any sense, let's move on. So when he was 99, the Lord appeared. Now let's plug in what we've understand. When, when you can see God, you have in that moment a manifestation of the gift of spirit, discerning of spirits according to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. He is actually seeing the Lord in a vision. The Bible says that the Lord, the Lord appeared to Abram and said, that's another gift of the spirit, manifestation of the spirit. When the Holy Spirit manifests in our lives, it's designed to leave us firmly persuaded. Anytime you experience God in a supernatural way, the result is going to be you're going to be firmly persuaded. We're trying to find out when was Sarah persuaded and who persuaded her? Well, the Lord appeared to Abram. And he said, that's another manifestation of the gift of prophecy. Prophecy is a, is a, is a divinely inspired utterance in a known tongue. God is speaking to Abram in this moment, and the result of the gifts of the Spirit are supposed to be that we're firmly persuaded. Again, if you're believing God to have a child, what you need is a word from the Lord. And when you get that word, you need to accept that it's true. Regardless of not having the proof, you've got a promise. When you have an experience with God, when something supernatural happens in one way or another, you've got to accept that supernatural experience as God moving on your behalf and it should leave you in a place of not confusion, yeah. but per persuasion. Yeah. How many of you are starting to put these things together? Yeah. Verse 2. God told him, walk before me and be perfect. That in other words means, you messed up last time. Now let's get it right. All right. Verse 2. If you get it right this time, I will make my covenant between me and you. And I'll multiply your seed exceeding. And Abram, in this moment of experiencing God fell on his face, and God talked to him, saying, verse after verse, he's telling him of all that he has already told him, the big plans that he has for his future. But I want to pick up, but notice he's having experience with God. He's on his face. God's talking to him. Amen. That's why it's so important for you to be a person of prayer. Yeah. You need to be in a place of prayer, continually seeking the face of God, and let God talk to you so that you can be firmly persuaded. Amen. Good. Hallelujah. Uh, the next verse, well, we're going to jump all the way down to Genesis 17 and 15. So God's talking to him. And God said to Abraham, as for Sarah, your wife, Sarah, your wife, you shall not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall her name be. We're trying to find out when was she persuaded or who persuaded her. Like God changed Abram's name to Abraham, he changed Sarai's name to Sarah, which means mother of a multitude, excuse me, mother of many nations. Not just mother of a few or, or of any. But he changed her name, so now when she's speaking it, she's hearing it again and again. So he said, you're going to call her name this, next verse. And I will bless her and also give her a son by her. Then will I, or then I will, he's talking about the future. Mm -hmm. I will bless her, and she shall. Shall is in the future. She shall be a mother. I mean, he's saying this when she is 89 years old. Uh -huh. All right. yeah. They could have rejected what God said. God is too late. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's gone too far. You know, what's dead in your life? Do I have time? I'm going to go all the way. Thank you, Lord, for help tonight. And uh, mothers, uh, she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be from her. All of these are future declarations. And guess what? God is saying it, but he's saying it. That's what's going to happen in the future. That means this is a manifestation of another one of those gifts. He is speaking a word of wisdom, which is a fragmentary part of the mind of God concerning events, future tense. In other words, God sees in the future that she's going to get it, and he, she is going to have a son, and this son is going to be, you know, uh, the, the beginning of kings coming out of her. Come on, let's go fast. He is giving her a manifestation. He's telling her what the future will look like. She can reject it. You can reject it. 
You can keep casting down. No, I'm not going to be anything great. No, nothing meaningful will ever come in my life. No, that business, that building will ever, never take off. No, this dream of having a child will never be. But if you accept that it's true, this is designed to give you the faith to see you through. Amen. Am I preaching good today? Amen. Verse 17. Then Abraham fell on his face and he laughed. And he said in his heart, shall a child be born to a man who is a hundred years old? And, and shall Sarah, Sarah, who is 90 years old, bear a child? What he talked to them or him about was so far-fetched, seemingly impossible, right. that the scripture says that he laughed and said this in his heart. He had questions in his heart about what God was showing him about his future. Mm -hmm. Look at the next verse. And Abraham said to God, oh, that Ishmael, he's trying to find another way. But God told him, God said, no, Good. Sarah, your wife, shall <laughs> bear a son. And you shall, what is he doing? He's prophesying and speaking a word of wisdom concerning their future. What is he doing? He's giving them the opportunity to accept that it's true. He's giving them the faith they need to see them through. Amen. No, she shall, and you shall call his name. And I will establish my covenant with him and his everlasting covenant and with his descendants after him. We skip down to the next verse after that. But my covenant I will establish with Isaac. You're going to call his name Isaac. And whom shall, shall bury you at this set time next year. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Child of God, if I had time, I'd really minister this to you. But I pray that you'll get what's happening. He's saying it again and again. That sounds very persuasive. If you didn't know God like you knew him, and if he was a stranger to you, and he was telling you all that he that will he will do this and that what is gonna happen, you'd have to buy that bill of goods in order to believe it. Amen. And that's what happened with them. God persuaded Abram. Mm -hmm. But what about who persuaded Sarah? She's not in this conversation. So chapter 17 finishes, and we pick up in chapter 18, verse 1. In verse 1, so Abram was 99 years old. God talks to him, tells him some things. Sodom and Gomorrah happens. And then in chapter, well, this is about to be Sodom and Gomorrah. And then another time, the Lord appeared to him by the tamarisk trees of Mamre. Why did he write that down? Because every time now he passed those trees, he told his son, boy, I remember the time. This was before you were born. We, God, I was right by these trees, and God spoke. Come on, somebody. You mark the spot. You need to connect the demonstrations of the Spirit of God in your life. Moments in time where he spoke to you distinctly, and you knew that you knew that God spoke. Connect that because the next big thing is connected to the last. The Lord appeared to him a second time now by the tap of the tree. He was standing in the door of the tent. They lived in a tent. And he was standing in the door, and sure enough, uh, they said to him, they, they started talking, we pick up at verse 9, and, and God said to him, where is Sarah, your wife? And he said, well, she's here in the tent. And verse 10 says, and he said, well, I will certainly return to you according to the time of life, and behold, Sarah, your wife shall have a son. Sarah was listening in the tent door which was behind him. Now check this out, because again, we don't ever see her getting directly from God what's going to be about her future. Right. It was always, he told her from the beginning. When he told me to leave, he told me that we were going to be a great nation. He's going to give me a land. Where are you really? Yeah, he's going to, and you're going to have a child. Really? <laughs> so she's going on, going on. That's where she got the idea. Well, I can't have a child. We'll have a child with him, but maybe that would be. Right? Mm -hmm. So obviously, Abram told her what the plan was, that what God's plan was, but God had never talked to her directly. This time. Not only did Abram persuade her over time, God himself says, where's Sarah? I know she's in there, God. Well, she's here in the tent. Well, tent ain't big. You know, you can hear somebody standing at the door. Well, she's behind the tent door. Listen to God tell him what it shall be. Amen. He, she hears him now say, your wife Sarah shall have a son. But check this out. There's a part of this verse that we can't skip. God said to Abraham, 
and behold, which means to look. I believe with all my heart, he had another manifestation of discerning the spirits. He saw into the future his wife pregnant. Good. Good. I see into the future of Faith Family Church. I see what it looks like because he's showing me the future. Scripture says that the Holy Spirit is in us and that he will guide us into all the truth and that he will show you things to come. Amen. When you see yourself married and pregnant, do you reject that thought? Do you, when you see yourself ever being married again, do you reject that thought? Do you cast it off as just a dream in your mind, disconnected totally from the plan of God for your future? Really? The truth of the matter is, he is showing you those things to cause you to be firmly persuaded. Yeah, yeah. Because that's how we receive from that. Yeah. Isn't this good tonight? Amen. <laughs> Man, I've been fired up about this for days now. <coughs> so he said, and behold, he showed him. He saw it in a vision. The word behold means to look. He said, look, Sarah, your wife shall have a self son. Now, she was standing in the door. Verse 11 says, now, Abram and Sarah were old. Now, you ain't got to keep telling us that in the Bible, right? But he keeps going over and going back to this again. I don't know what the doctor said about your situation, and I don't care how long you've been single. Amen. Or how long this marriage has been dead. They were old and well advanced, and Sarah had passed the age of childbearing. You ain't got to keep telling us that. What is he emphasizing? The Bible said in Romans 4.19 that they didn't consider that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They got to a place where they stopped looking at the natural and focused only what God was showing them in the spirit. The very next verse says, therefore, when, when Sarah heard God showing Abraham her being pregnant and having a baby, she laughed within herself. And said, after I have grown old, I'm 90 years old, God and Abram, Abram are out there talking in the tent, in the door of the tent, and they talk about me having a baby. I'm 90 years old. <laughs> shall I, who have, after I've grown old, shall I have pleasure? <laughs> we'll leave that alone. <laughs> My Lord being old also? You know, they stopped working. But Sarah received strength. Abraham received strength. <laughs> and the Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh? Now, she's behind the door. Now, Lord knows all things. She, thinks she, she said this in her heart. She laughed in her heart. He said, why did Sarah laugh, saying, shall I... Surely bear us a child since I'm old. And then he asked this question. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Now, I got like four minutes. Can I take ten and just finish the message? Yeah. And if you gotta leave, I understand. If y'all want to log off and log back on, that's cool. But I really gotta get this out. Amen. It's like too heavy for me to carry, man. So he said, why did she laugh? I'm going to jump down to 15. Um, oh, let me go back to 14. Read the whole thing. Is anything hard for the Lord? At the appointed time, I will return to you according to the time of life, and Sarah shall, here he's speaking that word of wisdom again, have a son. And Sarah denied it, saying, I didn't laugh. And she said that she was lying because she was afraid. Come on, you cannot allow fear in your life. Amen? Fear will make you do some dumb stuff like lie. Anyway. She denied it, said, I didn't laugh. And then God said, no, but you did laugh. <laughs> I thought that was cool. But let me go back to 14 because this is so powerful. When did she get the faith? When, when was she firmly persuaded? I believe at this moment in the tent, a day that she'll never forget. Yeah, I heard Abram telling me this and that. Yeah, Pastor Stan told me to believe again in the future and the hope that God has for me. But the other night, God spoke to my heart. Mm -hmm. I heard him mm -hmm. in me. Mm -hmm. He showed me what's to come. Mm -hmm. 
And I've made now a hard decision. He's been promising me this. But I decide now that he's faithful. He's going to do it. Amen. I believe this is the moment that she let God persuade her right. to believe. Question came up. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Yeah. In your life, that dream, that difficulty, that dead thing, is that too hard for the Lord? Yeah, you're separated and y'all are living in different places. The dream of a happy home, not just being in a home, is that too hard for the Lord? I know you said this is impossible or it seems unlikely, but is it God? God asks the question. Right. All right. Is anything too hard for me? Then he dealt with him laughing. What's interesting is this. Because in Numbers 11 and 23, the Lord said to Moses, Has my arms been shortened? <laughs> now you shall see whether what I say will happen to you or not. You never heard, you know, your arms are too short to box with God? That means he's got a long reach, right? <laughs> your arms, you, 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 you just, you just got to stop fighting, right? Because he's got a long reach. But then not only that, God says, let's flip it. Is his arms too short to deal with your situation? Oh, man. The answer is no. Has his arms been short? Can he not reach that for you? Whatever seems untamable? Jeremiah 32 and 17. I go through the word of God on this a lot. But ah, Lord God, behold, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and your outstretched arm. Your arm is not short. Great. You can reach into her body and cause her ovaries to work and her womb to be alive and to hold that baby and carry it full time. You can reach into that marriage. You can reach into the earth and bring these individuals together. Amen. Put the heavens together. He can put you together with the right person. All right. Ah, Lord God, behold, you made the heavens by your great power. Your there is. Hey, I love Jeremiah for this. He answers the question. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? There is nothing too hard for the Lord. Amen. Ah, man, in Luke chapter 1 and verse 36, now indeed Elizabeth, your, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age and is now in the sixth month with her who is called barren. She couldn't have a baby. God moved, and now she's having a baby. And God said to her through this angel, for with God, nothing will be impossible. Yeah. Amen. Don't cast off your dreams. Amen. God's showing you that. For you to believe that it will be, not might be or may be, but it will be. For with God, nothing is impossible. With a passion, I ask you the question that was asked. The Spirit of God took the prophet Ezekiel to a place and there were dead bones in the valley. I ask you this question tonight, faith family. And he said to me, son of man, can these bones live? Can this man live? After all this time, can you be found by the one who will adore you? Can you have your dreams? Amen. So I answered, oh Lord God, you know. But I want you to know the second thing is he, he came, said to me, prophesy to these bones. You need to speak over dead situations in your life. Yeah. You need to say, I, I can see myself 10 years now. I'm going to be married happily. I have a beautiful home. You want children? Our children, you know, we'll have children. And don't give up. Constantly be seeing and saying what your future looks like. Amen. Someday I'm going to have a baby. Someday I'm going to raise a family. Someday I'm going to, you know, just speak good about you. He said, yeah. speak to these dead situations. Yeah. Say to them, ah, you don't have time for this. All right. In the end of the story, and I'll close with this. I got more. I thought I was going to be able to do this tonight. I'll leave it for Sunday. I invite you to come back, of course. But in Genesis 21, at the end of the story. So from where we left off, in chapter 18, we dealt with chapter 19, 
Sodom and Gomorrah. But then in chapter 20 and chapter 21, again, he kept telling them, by this time next year, at the set time next year, <coughs> this is what will be. Well, in 21, the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. And the Lord did not did for Sarah as he had spoken. Did he visit her? Did he talk to her? No, 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 no. This is another manifestation, but this time is different than the other times. Mm -hmm. This is the manifestation of the working of miracles. True. Smith Wigglesworth said that when the dead is raised, three things have to happen. Special faith, working of miracles, and gifts of healing. We dealt with the faith part, but she's not. Things. That's a miracle. But then the gifts of healing had to happen because whatever was broken had to be fixed. Mm -hmm. When the Bible says here that the Lord visited her and the Lord did for her, that means he manifested the miracle in her. Amen? Verse 2, for Sarah conceived. She bore Abraham a son in her old age at the set time which the Lord has spoken in. A few verses later, Sarah herself said, God has made me laugh. And everybody who hears about this story will laugh with me. She also said, who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? <coughs> Not only did she have the baby, but she was also nursing. For I have borne him a son in his old age. I want to ask you that question tonight. Who would have said to you that the thing that was the furthest from you was Abel. Who would have said that he would have found a great wife or been found by a great husband? Who would have said that she would have ever had a child? I mean, you know, we had hoped that she had been married long before this. But who would have said that this person would have ever gotten married, would have ever been successful? Who would have said that you would have ever built that building? Who would have said that you would have ever started that business? Who would have said Oh, man, Amen. if I had the time. Amen. 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 Great. By faith, Sarah received strength to conceive a seed. Thank you all for visiting and logging on. And we pray that God bless you tremendously. We got more to add to this on Sunday. We hope to see you then.